Welcome back everyone. I'm Nathan again for Citizen Nerd and today we're going to build a J-pole antenna. This is a common antenna used in ham radio and, and several other uh, radio applications. Uh, it's a simple antenna to make which is one of the nice things but you'll need a few parts to do this. Uh, we'll go over the math for that here in a little bit but the parts you'll need is some copper tubing. This is half inch tubing. You'll need some coax. This is 50 ohm coax. It's an old piece I'm going to kind of hack up a little bit to use. You'll need a way to cut the pipe. So this is just one of those spinny cutters. You'll need a T, a 90 degree elbow, a few end caps, a tape measure, a pair of pliers so you'll burn yourself when you're using the blowtorch, and you'll need the blowtorch, and a way to light the blowtorch, and solder. And then, of course, I like to also be able to actually, you know, strip this stuff back so you need a stripper as well. Anyway, the strippers is just an electrical stripper. It's a pretty common piece. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to go over the math on how to make this thing, which gives us the length. And then we come back and we will start cutting this thing up and hopefully have a functional antenna. And we'll show you how to test it, show you what you should see, what it should do, what it shouldn't do. And we'll go over some, uh, some good points to this antenna. Okay, so this is the math we're going to use to make our J-pole antenna. I know it looks a little bit confusing and maybe a little bit like, wow, well, okay, I don't even know what some of these symbols are, like that or that. It's just wavelength. It's not a big deal. Okay, so we'll just go through this real quick. The antenna itself, which is in the form of a J, has also a bottom part to it. The bottom part length is not that critical, it's strictly the mounting point. So the, you're going to mount to an existing pole, or you're going to mount something like that. So that the length of that's not critical. The length, however, of the, of the tall boom, the small boom, and the gap between them on the J itself, keep in mind the antenna itself is just that. Okay. So the length is, this is a quarter wavelength, one quarter. So that's about a tenth of a wave, actually, is what that is. And this is three quarter wave from here to here. So the length up here and the length here, technically the term should be slightly different, but they're both about a tenth of a wavelength. So it, it actually would work both ways. So the math is actually quite simple. I've converted it to where we can use inches right, and feet. So the initial this length here is 705 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So for example, 705 divided by, we're going to use 146, and that will give us feet converted to inches, which is, of course, 12 inches foot, gives us 57.945 inches, or 57 inches and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Um, and that little amount will matter, but at the top of this, remember, you're going to have a cap on this cast step and a few other things. So we'll work that out when we get all said and done. And here is a quarter wavelength, which is going to be 19, 19 and 1 quarter inches for the center frequency of 146. And we're using that because in the United States, and I believe most of the world, actually, I don't know, don't take me for that, but in the United States, 144 to 148 is the 2 meter amateur radio band. We're making this for the 2 meter band, so... I just went dead center in the middle. Now, this distance here is 1 and 13 16 inches. And the distance up is 1 and 7 8 inches, you know, which is not a whole lot. It's actually 14 16 or 7 8. So it's, 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 it's fractionally different. And you can slide this up and down a little bit to make that be a little bit better. And, and we will. We'll show you how that works. So, this is the basic math on how the whole thing looks. Now you basically got 234 divided by frequency in megahertz gives you feet times 12 of course gives you inches. Same thing down here, 22 divided by frequency in megahertz gives you feet times 12 gives you one foot or one and 13 16 inches. And I will try and find the, the metric measurements for you. I'm used to doing the uh, regular uh, inches and feet because it's well, the United States. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, for the, the actual SWR or the reflected power or 
you know, the, the resistance off of 50 ohms. Um, center frequency, of course, is going to be 146, but because I'm making this out of tubular copper, is a copper water pipe that you can solder, um, being that the diameter is about a half of an inch wide, means that this slope is a little gentle. If I used, and it can be done, with ladder line, which I'll show a piece of that here in a little bit, but a piece of ladder line has like, I think it's 18 gauge wire in it, maybe 20 gauge wire. So this slope, instead of gentle, becomes, change colors, would be a lot more like that. It would be a sharper, sharper cutoff. But because we're going to be using water pipe, it's pretty decent. And to give you an example of how much you can really kind of mess this up a little bit on the numbers and get it yeah, close. At 144, I'm looking at this measurement here. At 144 megahertz, it's 19 and a half inches. At 148, it's 18 and 15 16 inches. So there's a little bit of a variance in there. But this is the basic math on how this thing is made. And you can Google this, and I can give you various links. There's a couple on uh, Wikipedia. Actually, it's not too bad. Uh, that breaks this down a little bit more. And there's actually a few of them that, out there that, that break this down significantly further. But for our purposes, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to cut this here. I'll do a few things here. So we're going to cut this point right here. Right there. So, expand that out a little bit. Okay. Okay, here we are now with all the parts actually cut and sized. So you always want to make sure that you double check your lengths and everything else, but I've done this already, but we can do it again, for example. So this piece should be 19 and a quarter inches. And if it's over a hair, just a teeny amount, it's not that big of a deal. This one's actually yeah, about an eighth, of, just about an eighth higher than it really should be. But that's okay, because we'll make adjustments for that. And it's just adjusting where the feed point is to give you your optimum level of um, impedance so the antenna is the right impedance for the transmitter um, but you'll need a few other pieces you'll need of course your T you'll need that small piece cut out which needs to be uh, yeah 1 and 13 16 inch but that's actually the total gap between them so this is actually a uh, little small C and it is right on 1 and 13 16 and you'll need a 90. And I accidentally brought the wrong 90 initially, but I went to Lowe's and got another one. And this one cost me a whole 37 cents. <laughs> this antenna doesn't really cost a lot. It's very, very simple to build, especially if you have some of the extra parts. Now, you notice I've got an extra long piece here. If you can see that really well. So, about that much difference. This is the bottom. We're just going to use this just to brace everything. But so, we'll set that aside for a sec here. Here's our long piece, which is cut right for 144 megahertz. So, your T is like that. So, a piece sticks out and another piece can go on the bottom. You're going to get it good and snug. Your short piece is here. Okay, make sure you deburr this or you're doing that. It'll hurt bad. You will 90 go there and then you want to check the gap between this point here and this point here to make sure that it is 1 and 3 16 inch and it is or 13 16 excuse me it is 
right at it. Exactly. So that's cool. Because that will sit like this. And when you line that up, and the easiest thing to do is put the other piece in there to get it lined up so it's flat. Then we'll solder this connection, this connection, and this connection, making sure that this is good and flat. Then we'll solder this one. The last one we'll do is the bottom. So, we're going to use a torch and our solder, and we're going to solder this thing up. 